G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Boom Guru, and today I've got an exciting video because I'm now introducing a new series and also a new platform on the channel. In this case, uh, PyRevit, which is an add-in which we are going to use in Revit that allows us to write Python scripts we can execute via a toolbar, amongst other things that we'll cover. Now this will form a series for the channel and probably a technology I will return to from time to time to show you how you can develop custom tools using the Python language in PyRevit itself. I would like to thank Asan, uh, the developer of PyRevit, for all the work he's doing for our industry. And if you do want to support him, definitely check out his Patreon page. Um, everything I show you is in a, technically an open source platform, which is pretty amazing and also means it's a fairly safe investment for your company if you do want to try out using this instead of other tools such as add-ins or Dynamo. I hope you find this useful and we're just going to look today at just introducing PyRevit, what it's about and just some examples of some work that I've done using it and then we'll move on to some more technical and practical videos later in the series. So let's jump in. So for those that have been following the channel for a while, um, you might represent my old presentation format. Um, given this is an overview video, it's more of a presentation. Um, so just a special little nod back to the channel's origins. So I'm using that template. But today, um, we're just looking at getting started with PyRevit, um, what it's all about and how you can use it. So I will be covering in this case what it is and also where you can learn more about the Python programming language as well as that how you can learn more about PyRevit and install it. And finally, just a quick example of some toolbars that are built using PyRevit so you get a better idea of what it can actually do for you. So what is PyRevit? Well, I mean, I like to just call it Python for Revit, um, but in this case, it is technically an add-in for Revit, so you do install it like an add-in, but at that point, you can develop using PyRevit. So it's more of a developer environment in the way that it functions. It's a little bit like Dynamo in that you can build your own scripts and tools to run through the add-in itself. It can technically also run Dynamo scripts as well, which is interesting. So this could be a good way to deploy your scripts to a wider audience, such as a company, um, rather than using Dynamo Player. Keep in mind, if you are gonna do this, you're not gonna be able to see Dynamo Player. So you will have to rely on packages like Data Shapes in order to prompt user interface windows. But PyRevit actually comes with some libraries, what we call forms, um, that can generate these sorts of objects as well. You can do really interesting things using PyRevit, also detecting events. So you can override the function of some of the tools in Revit using what we call hooks as well, which is quite intriguing. But I guess one of the, the, the best things about it is you can package your tools up into toolbars in Revit, which not only makes your tools more accessible, but also allows you to give your tools more of an identity, a brand, something people can recognize. So it also comes with heaps of pre-built tools by the authors as well, um, which allow you to pretty much have all these add-ins already available for you at your fingertips that do all sorts of things. So PyRevit to me is a really healthy middle ground between Dynamo and add-in development. You get a little bit of the best of both worlds. You get the simplicity of what we've learned in Dynamo through Python and the Revit API. And you also get the simplicity of writing things that can behave a little bit like add-ins without having to go the full nine yards and you're learning Visual Studio and all the other quirks that come with form generation, for example. It's an open source project, which is really interesting and brilliant. And I must commend the author, Asan Aranajad, for making this an open source movement. Um, I am surprised not more people are using PyRevit, given that it is open source, because that actually makes it quite a low risk investment, in my opinion. Because if Asan ever gets too busy for this project, there are no doubt people that would pick it up in his stead to further develop upon it. And there are people already contributing to the project as well through GitHub. So it's definitely a similar project to Dynamo in that it very much is a community driven program and movement. If you do want to contribute to Asan, he does have a Patreon. So do look up, look up the PyRevit Patreon. If you are using PyRevit and maybe aren't supporting him, I will likely be contributing myself quite soon. So a lot of people look at PyRevit and say, well, what about Dynamo? Are we moving on? Are we forgetting about it? Or are we doing a bit of both? Or is this just a distraction from Dynamo? In my opinion, both of them are still great to use together. Um, to me, Dynamo is definitely not gone or forgotten if you use a tool like PyRevit. I actually use both of them quite a lot. I still use Dynamo for a lot of really quick and simple tools that I need to build on the fly 
or some processes where people have developed custom packages I can already utilize that would be very difficult for me to write in native Python. Um, as well as this, if you need to package tools up quickly and easily for users, sometimes getting Dynamo scripts out to them through Dynamo Player can be a little bit easier. Um, but there are some challenges Pyrovit solves that Dynamo really struggles with. Namely, first of all, that the tools can be a little bit hard to access and approach in Dynamo for users. For example, in Dynamo Player, it's not always obvious where the inputs of a script should be edited, a very common issue I run across when trying to deploy tools to Dynamo users who are very new to the software. As well as that, um, the control flow and ability to handle, catch, and process errors is quite limited in a visual programming environment. You rely a lot more on how you use Python in Dynamo in those scenarios. As well as this, developing packages or managing packages is quite difficult in Dynamo, especially if the users don't know how to install them. Whereas I found PyRevit comes with a lot of fantastic functions, libraries, methods, things that you can use at your fingertips, which really do achieve very similar outcomes to some very popular custom packages in Dynamo, such as data shapes. As well as this, it's very easy to package, deploy and maintain PyRevit toolbars if you are trying to distribute those to your company. Effectively, you only need them to be in one server-based location, and your users can typically just point to that location and get the latest and greatest outcome, which is really cool. But I do use Dynamo a lot, especially for quick exercises or what I'd call a prototype, which is quite similar to a lot of add-in developers who often still test their ideas in Dynamo before developing a full add-in from that idea. But what about add-ins? Of course, um, they're very, very useful. There are some fantastic add-ins out there that do a lot of really complicated things. Some are free, some aren't. Typically, the ones that aren't tend to justify their cost through the time you save. Um, now, PyRevit isn't your way to escape using add-ins altogether, but at the same time, you can build scripts in PyRevit that behave very much like an add-in, even if they are sometimes a little bit linear in nature. Um, I've pretty much managed to build a lot of, you know, relatively simple and also mildly complex add-ins using PyRevit myself, um, and the ability to be the developer behind the tool is often quite powerful as well, especially if you're using add-ins that don't age well. For example, the developers don't maintain them. Sometimes there is lower risk in companies taking on board the development responsibility in-house, and PyRevit can be a great way to do that for a team that knows a little bit about Python, but not a great deal about c -sharp and Visual Studio. I do believe some firms can actually get by with just using PyRevit. But of course, they need the time, the investment, the resources to maintain such a movement. Do you need Python? It's probably a really important question to answer. Um, pretty bluntly, I'm just going to say, yes, you do. Um, it is very hard to get the most out of PyRevit if you don't know a lot about Python. Um, having said that, Python is a really approachable programming language, and there are so many resources out there that you can use to learn about it. So I do highly encourage you to look into learning Python just as a language. Don't learn it in the context of Dynamo, in the context of PyRevit to begin with. Just learn about Python for the sake of Python. Use something like an integrated developer environment. I believe they're called um, something like Thony, for example, is my choice. You've got, I think there's one called PyCharm. Um, there are some other ones that you can use to learn just about Python for the sake of Python. There are just some things I've listed here that you should learn about before moving on. Um, for example, how you can manage variables in the Python language, as well as that how you can loop or iterate across lists of objects, um, as well as this, how you can catch and handle errors using a statement such as try except, um, as well as that how you can define your own custom functions for reuse or repetitive reuse, and as well as that how you can work with imported libraries and the functions and methods that come from them. Now I do have a series over on my channel, which is focused towards getting people into Python for Dynamo, but focuses on Python just as a holistic programming language. The examples I use don't relate directly to Dynamo, they just relate to Python programming concepts. I've also made sure these videos are quite short. They're about seven to eight minutes each, and by the end of the series, you should have a relatively good understanding of the core concepts that you'll typically use in programs like Dynamo or PyRevit when using Python. As well as that, the Revit API is something you will need to learn at least a little bit about to get the most out of using PyRevit. I do recommend learning Python first, then learning Python in Dynamo and looking into the Revit API as your window into the next step. Now, the Revit API isn't possible to fully learn, to master, in my opinion. It's a vast collection of commands 
that you can send to Revit from programs. So don't seek out a course that teaches you the whole Revit API. It's just not realistic. A lot of people ask me, how can I learn the Revit API? I want to master it. Don't. Learn what you need and learn progressively, step by step. Do focus on learning about how the API is structured by using Revit API docs. So focus on things like Revit classes and libraries, as well as that what functions, methods, and properties are, and also how enumerations work, and also how you can unwrap objects, and also in Dynamo, how you can return them back to Dynamo using the 2DS type, um, I believe, methods in, in that case. As well as that, really importantly, learn about transactions and also learn about the with statement, which is sometimes used in combination with transactions, especially in PyRevit. And maybe also you could look at the way you can create your own custom classes and properties of objects in Python as well. Uh, but like I said, there is no magical guide. Um, just learn it bit by bit. Having said that, I do have quite a few examples of not only using Python in Dynamo, but the Revit API with some specific examples in Python in Dynamo, which will be very similar to how you would go about the same thing in PyRevit. So you might find some of these videos quite useful. At the end of the day, you want to think about your journey through programming and where PyRevit, Python, the Revit API, C Sharp, add-ins, where you, where you put those all together. What is your goal? Maybe you don't actually need to develop add-ins. Maybe that's a step too far. Maybe you can rely on other developers that make these for you, but you need to make your own simple tools that can do very specific things to your company or your needs. My pathway looks a little bit like this. I find myself around the middle at the moment learning about Python and the Revit API and just starting to dip my feet into C Sharp. And the more I dip my feet into C Sharp, the more I realize, yes, you can do things very quickly and efficiently in this language, but I can do a lot actually with just things like PyRevit. Um, so you might find partway along your journey you find what you need. Maybe you can stop and make PyRevit work for your company. Maybe you can make Dynamo work for your company. Um, but it's important to think about the order of things that you're approaching and make sure it's methodical and that you don't repeat your learning, but at the same time that you don't skip fundamental stages. So how can you actually install PyRevit? Well, there is a GitHub um, where you can download installers. It's a very well built GitHub. It's got a lot of readmes on it, which is great. Um, effectively, you just need to download an installer, run it or set up a routine to install it properly using a, probably a CLI or a command line utility. If you don't know what that means, ask your IT manager. And if you don't have an IT manager, just run the manual one. Um, and from there, you can also install settings to point to toolbars, which I'll show you how to do in this video as well. So if I go over to the GitHub, um, in this case, uh, this is Asan around Najad's GitHub for PyRevit. Um, you can see there's quite a lot going on, but there is actually a very organized GitHub down here um, with a section dedicated towards installing PyRevit. This will take you to his Notion board, but in this case, you'll have a step-by-step -step instruction on how, in this case, you can install PyRevit as well as some common issues you might come across. Um, but for the most part, I found it's a very reliable and simple process. So in this case, it will take you back to the GitHub. So it's a little bit of a funny journey, but in this case, you have the latest installer that you can work with. I do recommend if you're running PyRevit in a company, you do pick a version of PyRevit and stick to it as long as you feel is necessary. Don't just keep installing the new version every time because you'll get users on different builds of PyRevit potentially. So you should be building your tools against the same build that you're all working to. Having said that, I believe Asan is typically just bug fixing and building on top of PyRevit, so I don't expect it to radically reject scripts that are built in older versions, um, but it's just worth keeping in mind. So that's pretty much how you install PyRevit. And once you do, next time you open Revit, you should have a toolbar available. You can also learn a lot about PyRevit itself. It's almost like its own small programming language in Python. It has its own custom methods and functions. Um, a lot of things you can learn that come with it that are built by Asan himself, um, which is really awesome. Um, but there are also other people's examples you can download or just have a look at the source tools written by the author. Um, or you can look at custom packages in Dynamo to learn more about Python for Revit and Dynamo, which usually directly translates into how you use it in PyRevit. So I'll quickly just show you some resources that I find quite useful. So first of all, um, in this case, we have the, uh, the PyRevit read the docs. Um, as Asan does tell us, he does recommend reading the whole thing because it provides a lot of what you need to know about developing scripts in the PyRevit environment. I found this very useful. It taught me a lot. Um, for example, if we have a look at maybe forms or Revit, 
which are modules of the PyRevit library, I believe. Um, they might be called libraries themselves. You can see very interesting things like the ability to suppress errors, but at the same time, there are gonna be some other commands that you might not be aware of otherwise, such as closing documents. We've got forms and I find these very useful. These effectively give you user interfaces, but there's great instructions here about all the arguments you'll need to provide them in order to make sure that they work. Um, so for example, we can do a value window and we can see the various arguments that are expected as well as an example of how you could build one of those forms. There's also a notion board managed by Asan, which does have a lot of great examples. And there's also a forum, um, which is mildly active. There are some people on there doing quite a lot of good work. Um, but at the same time, you can see a lot of different sort of guides on how you can work with PyRevit. I like to look at the tools in PyRevit itself. So once you have PyRevit installed, you'll have this whole toolbar available by default. Let's have a look at one of the tools inside PyRevit itself. Um, for example, maybe we'll have a look at the Print Sheets tool. So it actually comes with a batch printer by default, which is pretty amazing. So you can see you can sort of build add-ins um, if you know what you're doing. Having said that, this is made by the author. Um, so all of these tools are actually stored in your PyRevit folder where it's installed to. I'm actually gonna run my own tool in my own toolbar called PyRevit that effectively just takes me to PyRevit. Um, if I go in here into, I believe, extensions, PyRevit tools, PyRevit tab, in this case, I can navigate that particular tool I'm running. So I can see I'm in the drawing set tab and we'll talk about how you can build your own toolbar later. But you can see we're just working through Windows folders, which is pretty cool. We'll look at the print sheet tool and we can see in here that there are a few different things. Um, there's some settings files, for example. But if I just use um, Notepad++ and have a look at what this script is actually doing, you'll see that we can actually see the source code script um, all available now. It's a pretty big script. It's more than a thousand lines. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, for the most part, it looks like it is just functions. And then right at the end, it's running a pretty specific uh, function. But um, it's probably you know, beyond what I understand myself personally, um, but it's all there for you to see at least, which is pretty amazing. Um, there are some tools that are being used here that reference other Python libraries that come with PyRevit with functions built by Asan. Um, for example, I know if I have a look for, uh, I think the wipe tool, I think some of these might use pre-built functions or maybe the revisioning tool, which is under uh, revision and there should be a set revision on sheets tool. So if I have a look for this specific tool instead, power of a tab, drawing set, revision, and set revision on sheets. I believe there's a custom, there's some customs in here. So I can see in this case, um, I have a form that deals with selecting revisions. So I don't actually have to construct the contents of that form myself. Asan has actually built his own tool that automatically knows how to show these things in the first place. But you can see this tool isn't actually too complicated, it's quite short. Um, in this case, it mostly deals with custom forms built by Asan himself that are programmed elsewhere in the Python contents of PyRevit. Um, but I found that it's very useful to just be able to see how he does certain things in PyRevit. For example, where he's referencing Revit or the DB, which we'll talk about in future videos as well. I sometimes like to also use Dynamo to view how people solve problems in Python um, in their custom packages. And there are some specific packages I probably look at the most when I'm trying to solve these types of problems. A really good one that I refer to quite frequently is the Genius Loci package uh, managed by a really generous person called Albin. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Um, but if I look at just one of these things, you'll see that typically he's working with Python. So you can see a lot of examples of how to work with Python here. And typically they're very well set up as well, very clean in how they name variables. Um, so I think it's a really great package. You can also use my own package if you like, Crumple, which again has quite a lot of things. For example, maybe you want to learn about how to apply revisions to sheets. So I have an add revisions to sheets tool. And within here, you'll find a Python script, which would allow you to emulate such a function using something in PyRevit. Just as an example, um, again, I'm not as clean as some package managers, so apologies for that. Um, but for the most part, this could be a really quick and easy way to learn about some of the fundamentals of the Revit API with a bit of context. So do keep those in mind um, when you're trying to learn just a little bit about PyRevit itself. 
So as you saw, I was interacting with a toolbar that comes with PyRevit itself. These tools all just come as it is. Um, but as well as this, you can create your own toolbar um, and you can structure it in very particular ways. And I'll just show you an example of a tool I have actually built that will build from scratch in a future video. So if I switch back to Revit, um, currently I actually have uh, my own toolbar that I've just started developing for fun, um, which is called a uh, Pi Revit. So in this case, it's based on kangaroos. Um, there are various tools in here to begin with, a few links you can open. There's a tool called Pouch that lets you store links and open them later. So in this case, I can actually you know, remove my links, but you'll see what I'm actually storing in my pouch. I have all sorts of folders, um, and this is just controlled using a settings file. I'm not going to forget anything, but it, let's say I want to find where my current model is located. It opens the folder and finds the file. Um, the script that I'll show you quickly in a tool itself is the bulk rev or the bulk revision tool. In this case, you can up rev or down rev. Up rev, down rev, just a bit of a joke. Um, let's just run the up rev tool. It's firstly going to ask me to pick a revision. Then it's going to ask me to pick sheets I'd like to add a revision to. Let's say all of them. In this case, we can see we've just successfully added that revision to all six sheets. So how does this tool actually look in a toolbar? Well, I'm just going to open PyRivet, and that actually runs the script. But in this case, you can see that I'm dealing firstly with panels. So I have an About panel and a Tools panel. These are actually just folders in Windows. So I'm now going to go to my Tools panel, and now I can see I have different types of objects. I have a push button and I have pull downs. If I open Bulk Roof, you can see I have an Up Roof and a Down Roof which are in a pull down. So just how you name the folders effectively informs PyRevit how to construct your toolbar. If I open up the uproof tool, I can see now I have a bundle, which is gonna tell my file a few properties it should have. For example, what is its author, its description. Um, it, it effectively is controlled by this file, which we'll learn about later. We have an icon and we have a script. So if I have a look at my script, and for the most part, I haven't relied on the tools that come with PyRevit to write this. I've written it for the most part in just Python itself. Um, we can see firstly, we're importing libraries. I'm defining a custom class in this case that allows me to show an object using some of its different properties in a user interface. I'm getting the active document, collecting all my sheets. I'm sorting my sheets based on their numbers so they do fall in a logical order. And then I'm actually generating a form that lets me select a revision. So I am using one of Asan's forms in this case. Uh, but from that point onwards, I'm just dealing with a big if statement. So I'm saying if I haven't actually got any sheets, I'm going to say there are no sheets available. And that's the end of my script because the if statement finishes here. If I don't have a revision selected, I can stop the script and say the revision isn't selected. And after this, then if this is all correct, I can now show a new window interface. Um, in this case, I'm actually picking the specific sheets that I need to uprev. Then I'm checking, did I actually return any options? If not, I go down here and say no sheets were revisioned. And otherwise, with a Revit transaction, I'm attempting to add a revision to the revisions of those particular sheets. So you can see the control flow that we're able to achieve in such an example would be very difficult to do in Dynamo without the introduction of a lot of Python and Python-based nodes, which is very much possible in Dynamo. Um, but some of these steps to install those packages and to maintain um, are much more difficult than working with a tool in PyRevit itself. But we will have a look at actually building a tool like this from the ground up in a future video as well. And this toolbar actually is available um, over on my GitHub. So you're most welcome to download it, try it out. Um, it's just literally there in folder format. So all the folders are available. And I also do have just a very basic wiki um, that just runs you through how uh, PyRivet actually works, what all the tools can do, um, how you can run them, and that's pretty much it. I mean, one of the, the, the feature tools that I use this tool for is the pouch, which allows me to both store links and open them, and that just takes me to various locations on my computer, for example, my Revit library. So you can see it's very quick and convenient uh, when you don't want to keep jumping over to Explorer or creating uh, custom shortcuts, which typically I find aren't very reliable. Um, so pretty fun, but we might run through the pouch in a separate video because it's quite a complex tool, uh, but a fun one nonetheless. So I believe at that point, um, we've pretty much reached the end of this first video about PyRevit, but there are going to be future videos. I want to make this a series, um, probably a continuous series. So most likely these videos will follow each other uh, week to week. 
Uh, but my next video, I will just focus on taking some Dynamo scripts, adjusting them to work in PyRevit, and then building a very basic little toolbar to package them. From there, um, we'll have a look at how you can build uh, Python scripts for PyRevit specifically, and then we'll focus a little bit more on toolbar construction after that. So we'll probably just begin with push buttons typically, and then we'll explore some different types of tools and methods for laying out your toolbar, designing your icons. And we'll probably look at hooks in a video right at the end as well to show how you can pick up events uh, in Revit um, using PyRevit and execute scripts when they are picked up or before they're picked up or after they're picked up. So quite a fun little tool, I've got to say. But that probably finishes this particular one, so we'll just jump in the outro. So I hope this served as a useful introduction to PyRevit and what it can do and what it ultimately is. Um, at the end of the day, it's definitely what you make it. Um, the great thing I love about PyRevit is you can build your own custom tools, give them their own personality, give them their own pizzazz, as you might say. Um, I'm having a lot of fun using it with some clients and they're really enjoying the results as well. If you do have any questions about PyRevit, feel free to leave them down below or reach out to me. But in future videos, we will focus on some practically oriented workflows, showing you how you can set up your own scripts and tools as well. If you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos in the series. Thanks. Take care. Bye.